It was launched in September of 2010 and by many measures has done exceedingly well. There are hundreds of videos that are part of the collection, including one by President Barack Obama. There was a book and a TV special. The It Gets Better project has raised the profile of youth and bullying and suicide and all the difficulties that young people are going through today with the promise that in adulthood it will get better. Many of us in life go through difficult times, but it's important to remember that youth, adolescents, experience tremendous stress today in the United States. 78% of adolescents report that at some time they were bullied. Now, bullying doesn't just happen in the schoolyard anymore. It happens around the neighborhood, and most pernicious is the cyberbullying that goes on because it pops up on someone's telephone and on the computer, and it gets shared and shared and shared, and because it's on the internet, it's there forever. Two-thirds of those who have said they were bullied also said that they considered suicide as a viable resolution to the bullying. While LGBTQ youth are by far the largest group of youth at risk for suicide, youth suicide is still the second leading cause of death among adolescents today in the United States. That's quite a significant problem. Bullying is one piece of that picture. Another piece of the picture comes with all the other forms of abuse that children, youth, and adults experience. Physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, intimate partner violence, workplace bullying, all of it negatively impacts people in significant ways. While indeed things can get better, it, it's not that time heals all wounds. This isn't an automatic process. So today what I wanna talk about is how that process begins, the first initial steps towards making one's own life better after the experience of abuse, bullying, and other similar kinds of difficulties. Now's a great time to subscribe to the channel as well as to click the bell. I am someone who was bullied in junior high and high school. It was pernicious, it was prolonged, and by the time I reached my senior year of high school, I felt very isolated. I withdrew from all the activities I had been involved with in high school and just couldn't wait to get out. Three days after graduating from high school, I was off to college. I wanted out. But geography didn't solve the problem. Whenever someone has been abused, whether it's bullying or whether it's other kinds of abuse, there are messages internalized about that experience or from that experience. A person feels as though they're not good enough. They may have been told that their life isn't worth living. They've clearly been told that there's something wrong about how they are. And that stays with a person. It gnaws at you and it becomes part of your identity. It weighs at your self-confidence and, and really eats at your sense of yourself. Now, in another video, I'll talk about guilt and shame, and that's very much part of this, video, this dynamic. But today I wanna to just talk about how we take initial steps to get better. So my initial step was to try to escape, and that's often what people do when they're trying to get out of abusive situations. But what becomes important down the road to really enter into a process of healing is that we have to make the decision that we've hurt enough and that we want to get better, that we're not gonna keep burying the pain that we've had. And it gets better as we begin to learn to move past that pain. When I was a junior or senior in college, I was invited to attend a spiritual retreat. 
This retreat was made up of people from a few different colleges and universities, as well as some adults. It was basically for people under 40. The setting was a farm that had been converted to a kind of retreat conference center. So there was large open area, lots of country. It was really beautiful. It was a really nice place to get away for the weekend for this retreat. Now, I'll be honest, I don't remember any of the content of the retreat. I remember where I was, and I remember a particular conversation that happened Saturday afternoon. But to understand the importance of this conversation, I have to tell you a little bit about myself when I was that age. Whenever I was in college, I was very, very serious. I was really intense, and I was focused on wanting to be the best person I could be. And I wanted people to like me because I was sure they didn't like me. And I was determined that I had to grow and strip away everything that was preventing me from being the best person I could be. I really internalized the message that there's no gain without pain. And I surely was very tiresome to many people because I took all of this so seriously. The Saturday afternoon of this retreat, I went out walking with a woman who was on the retreat. And we're out walking in the pasture and talking, and I'm telling her about how serious I am about growing. And I'm willing to rip off anything that prevents me from being the whole best person I could be. And she's listening very carefully. And, and, and Mary, who went with me, she was, you know, in her 30s, she was getting over a divorce, and she's hearing my story. And she stops and she listen, looks at me and says, I don't know about you, but I don't really think that growth and pain are the same thing. I think that growth includes happiness, connection. It includes intimacy. It's about being our best self and laughing and having fun and being enjoyable and enjoying other people. And she said, I don't know if this is true for you, but I know for me, right now, on this walk, on a sunny day in this field, I'm growing. Are you growing right now? And it caught me so off guard and caused me to rethink what I was saying about myself and who I was. It gave me the opportunity to relook and revision what growth meant for me. Today in my life, I understand growth very differently. I think of the seeds that I plant in my garden. I plant them, and over time, they first put out some roots and then shoot up a stalk, a little stem. And once that stem breaks the ground, the sun shines on it and the rain waters and nurtures it. And it just grows in the warmth of the sun and the coolness of the rain. And it does what it needs to do. And eventually it will blossom and flower and produce the fruit or vegetable that it's meant to produce. And that's how growth is. Yeah, there's a moment when the stalk, the stem, the sprout, is trying to push through the earth. That's hard. But most of the growth, it's laying in the sun and just taking it in. It's enjoying the sun and growing healthy. And that's how it is for us. I think a lot of times we're afraid to deal with the pain we have had in life, the stuff we've pushed down and buried, because we're afraid of that pain. We think the hurt's going to be overwhelming. But in fact, moving past that pain is just a piece. It's one aspect of the healing. Along with that healing are a lot of other things. There are connections that take place. There are ways in which we open up to enjoy life more, that we appreciate ourselves and appreciate our life. So that's how things are going to get better. 
but they get better when we take the first initial step. In order for us to really get better and for our lives to get better, the initial step we need to take is to decide that we're tired of the pain and we want to grow and do so in a healthy way. That initial step leads us to share what happened, the events, the incident, our story with someone we can trust. Perhaps that will be a friend, someone who will be with us and listen to us and take in our story. But for many people, that person will be a therapist or a counselor, someone who's really trained to listen. But the important thing here is that we need someone to be with us to witness what's happened to us, what events occurred. Those events can be very different from one person to another. Perhaps you were an LGBTQ plus youth who were, was kicked out of your home and told that your parents didn't want you, or you were in an abusive marriage and were repeatedly beaten by a spouse, or perhaps you were belittled at work and continually put down for things that, over which you had no control. Whatever the situation is, it's important to get the courage, get the strength to muster it up and share that with another. You see, there's often a sense of embarrassment in admitting that this happened to me. But the reality is, is that it's someone else who did it. Someone else was in the wrong and hurt you. It's not a failing on your part. But it's important that you speak and that you allow someone to hear the pain. Because when you tell your story, you're taking what's here that you're holding inside and beginning to put it out there. And it's about releasing that, getting it outside of yourself, that the first step in healing can really happen. As long as we hold it in and try to push it down further and further, then it will continue to eat at us and really harm us. But it's by letting it out, putting it out there and opening up and sharing with someone who can receive it. Now that's important, sharing with someone who can receive it. And you may be someone who's listening who will hear this story and at all times in our life and we'll all have occasions when someone will turn to us to tell us their story. And it's important for us to listen, to be present and to hear that story, not to try to solve anything, definitely not to sweep it under the rug and to say it didn't happen that way. Instead, to simply listen and be present with the person in that moment. It's their story. It's receive what they have to give. An early Christian feminist theologian, Nell Morton, reflected on a verse from the biblical book of Genesis. It's a familiar verse that God spoke and it came into being. God spoke and it was created. And in her reflection, she says, yeah, we understand the power of speaking that God spoke and things were made. But what if no one heard? What if no one was listening? If no one was listening, would anything have been made? Would creation have occurred? And from that point, Morton goes on to reflect that the other half of the equation is critical. The hearing, that the word being heard, is the act of creation. So that by listening carefully, we hear another into being. We hear them into life. By listening to what is given, we bring another reality where things get better. 
That's how healing begins. That's the initial step, a step that we all need to take when we've carried a burden. Now, yes, it's helpful to tell your story, to write about it in a journal, to continue working to get it out, because you may need to tell your story more than once. But that first step, that first time, is critically important. And that's the way that we begin to heal and begin to get better. Thanks for your time. Please like this video, subscribe, ring the bell, and most importantly, share this video with somebody who may need to hear it. Again, thank you.